Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to design and print for assembly. For some 3D models, it might make sense to break it up into smaller pieces. Whether you don't have the build volume, it would require too many supports, or it just wouldn't work after you print it, there are many different reasons you'd want to break up a model. However, there are some considerations you may want to take when either designing the part or assembling it once it's printed. And in the Piper City Blackwell area, 68 degrees today. This jet engine was designed by Katia V5 FTW from Thingiverse, and it serves as a really great example for assembling a large print, because you have a lot of different fasteners and different size parts, and there's a lot of different things about it that make it a great example for designing for assembly. Tip number one, keep organized. Make sure you have a designated spot to put the printed parts once they're done, whether it's a plastic tub or a cardboard box or just a grocery bag. Having some place to put all the parts will help you not lose pieces. As a matter of fact, I actually lost a couple of these and had to go reprint them a second time just because of how small they are. So it's really nice to have just one place where all the parts need to go. Tip number two, lay out all the parts after they're printed. So this is called knolling, but what it does is it really helps organize you so you see this is where all of the orange parts are and the order they need to be assembled onto the center column or you can actually see, oh, I actually don't have this casing piece. I need to go reprint that. So it's really handy to just be able to grab the part you need or to see what's coming next or what you're missing all in one place. Tip number three, test your tolerances before you start assembling. For a couple of these parts, there were small inset hexagonal holes designed to hold nuts flush with the top surface. But for some of them, the tolerances were just a little off and they didn't fully see. So I had to use a longer screw, which wasn't a problem, but if I had fully assembled it and noticed it, I may have, to have gone back a couple steps to deal with it. If you're designing the part, try a couple times seeing, do I need 0.1 millimeter larger than the nut size, 0.3 millimeter? It all depends on the tolerances that your printer is capable of and how well it's calibrated. Step four, consider the order for assembly. Now for some of these parts, I had to think about, well, if I put it together this way, am I gonna be able to reach the screws in the next step? So with the casing, like up here, if I put the screw in one direction, I couldn't get the nut in on the other side, or vice versa with some other parts. So I had to make sure that I could actually get either the tool in place or get the hardware in place to get it to all fit. Tip number five, overestimate how many pieces of hardware you need. Now for some of these, like bearings, it's very easy to see. I need two of these and two of those. But for screws and nuts, you're going to want to overestimate because there's nothing worse than being three quarters of the way through assembly and then running out. So maybe get 10 extra than usual. Maybe you counted that it needs 47, get 57. Then you just have some extra for a later project. Tip number six, make sure your parts look good before you start assembling. Now, if you're going to invest all this time to screw this all together and assemble it, make it nice for display, make sure that the parts that are going into it look good. Not gonna want to have to look at it and go, man, I really should have reprinted that part that warped, or maybe there was some stringiness from poor retraction settings, or it just wasn't a good print. If that's the case, just throw it out and try again because it's gonna look a lot better once every part looks its best. Tip number seven, drill out holes if necessary. Now for some objects, the holes may be specifically designed to be smaller than the screw. That way the screw threads will self tap into it and lock into the plastic. However, for the casing, it's designed to have a screw that meets a nut on the other side. And to make assembly easier, I drilled out all of the holes just a little bit with a 3.2 millimeter drill bit so that the three millimeter screws would slide through and make assembly just a lot easier. Screw on nuts and bolts by hand before you start using a tool. Now this is just gonna make it easier to assemble because you don't have to try and wedge in a bunch of tools. I usually will take a set of pliers, hold the nut and thread it if it's in a hard to reach spot and then spin it by hand with just a finger. And for sections like here where it's a lot easier to reach, I'll just hold it with my finger, screw the other side with the wrench and then once it's getting close to bottoming out, use tools to hold it in place, make sure it screws on tightly. Dry fit parts before you break out the super glue. So a lot of this, even though it looked like, oh, just assemble it in this order, once I did that, 
without the glue, I found I couldn't get later parts to fit into place. So by dry fitting parts, I was able to see that well, to get this together, I need to put on this part first and then screw this part on and then snap this together. If I just went straight for the glue, I may have had a bunch of parts I needed to reprint because they wouldn't fit. Make sure that when you're using super glue or any sort of glue that you're controlled with it and that it doesn't get on parts that are meant to move. So with all these parts that spin, I, it made sense for me to put a little glue near it on these parts that are held in place and then start spinning this to make sure that any glue that may have seeped towards it doesn't actually hold the part in place and it's able to keep spinning until it fully sets. Also, try not to get it on your hands because there's nothing worse than picking up a part you think is dry and now it's stuck to your hands. You really do leave a bit of yourself in the project. And that pretty much covers it. I'm sure there's some tips in there that I didn't think of but have definitely happened to you. And if that's the case, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to stay tuned for more episodes of How To. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.